On this week's episode of A Drier Dose of Disney, Jared takes us to Animal Kingdom to share the best foods and restaurants in the park. Welcome to another episode of A Dryer Dose of Disney. I'm your host, Jared Dreyer, and today we are taking you to Animal Kingdom, where we are going to talk about the best places to eat and the best foods in that park. If you've been listening to this series, you would know that this is episode number eight out of 11, where we are talking about the best foods at all of the Disney and Universal parks. We started out on the West Coast in Anaheim, and we did Disneyland and California Adventure, as well as Downtown Disney and Universal Hollywood. We are now working our way through the Orlando parks, going with Disney first. We will next be doing Disney Springs, and then we'll go to Universal Orlando Resort and cover City Walk up there as well. So we will be wrapping this up in the next few weeks here. But today is the last day at the Disney parks in Orlando for Animal Kingdom, and we've got a fun episode for you. Animal Kingdom definitely has some of the most unique food that we've had at any of the Disney parks, and they've all been fantastic. So you definitely want to listen to this episode. But before we get started, I do want to ask, go ahead and click pause wherever you're listening to us or if you're watching us on YouTube and click that subscribe button. That way, every single week when we drop our episodes, you'll be notified and you'll know what the best secrets and tips and tricks are for all the Disney and Universal parks as we release those out. So definitely you want to be a subscriber, which is totally free to do it that way. We also ask if there's a tip or trick that saved you some money while you were at the parks. Find us over at Patreon. You can do so in the links down below. So wherever you're listening to us again, or if you're watching us on YouTube, we have links below our video or below our podcast with all of our different connections out there, including Patreon, where you can support us. You can throw us a couple dollars there as a way to say thank you for all the tips and tricks that we've provided over at A Dryer Dose of Disney. So if you wanted to also be a subscriber, you can subscribe through Patreon. And if you do, you're going to get early access to our Butterbeer episode which is fantastic. We have nailed Butterbeer and you'll get access to our How to Go to Disney for Almost Free episode, which will save you a ton of money on your next Disney trip, which we have done twice and we are now working towards our instance of doing that. So lots of great stuff out there on Patreon. So definitely click that link and then know that all of our other supporters and our tips and tricks are also down there in those links as well. So take a moment, go through those and look to see if there's anything that's going to help you save some money save some time, and then click through over there. We would definitely appreciate it. But let's dive into this episode, and I'm going to start with a couple disclaimers. So first, right out of the gates, if you've heard our other episodes, we've talked about these same two things on all the others. But first is every single Disney park or Universal park is going to have the same really basic hamburgers, cheeseburgers, hot dogs, pizza, chicken nuggets, and those kind of things that the kids are going to We have done our best to omit those from our top places to eat and our top foods in the park. Because almost any place you go is going to have those for the kids. And those are staples. You're going to find those at every single place you go. What we are highlighting are the things that your teens and young adults and older adults are absolutely going to love. And we're going to talk about a lot of the different flavors, a lot of the different fun atmospheres. And we'll also hit a little bit on the prices as well. So you get an idea of what you're going into before you get to the parks. Our second disclaimer is we are one family and we can't eat everything. Trust me when I say we have tried to go to every single restaurant, but we have not had every single food item on every single menu. This is from our experience, the best ones that we've ever had. And we've also talked to a lot of friends and family who go to the parks as well quite a bit. And they all agree unanimously with these lists. So at the end of the day, know that you're getting a great list here, that these are the top food items in the park. It's not just our family that's saying it. Others are saying it as well. But we do try to hit all the other restaurants and all the other menu items too. If you have something that didn't make the list that you think, no, this is even better, find us over at Facebook and message us and let us know because we want to hear about that. We want to go try it on our next trip. And then we will update these episodes periodically and maybe your recommendation, and we'll call you out on that, will be on a future episode. So please find us over at Facebook, over at A Dryer Dose of Disney, and send us those comments and those remarks about the best foods that you've ever had at the park. In the future, through our Patreon subscribers as well, we will also have episodes where we bring our listeners on and we talk about their favorite things at the parks or the best foods that they've ever had at the park. So a lot of really cool things going on here at A Dryer Dose of Disney. But with that, let's go ahead and jump on in and we're going to start with the restaurants. And we like to look at three things on each restaurant that we cover. And that is, what's the atmosphere like? So is this going to be a fun atmosphere? Maybe it's character dining. Maybe it's quick service. 
We look then number two at the price and number three then at the food, of course. And so these are the top five restaurants over at Animal Kingdom. And we're going to start with number five. And number five is the Satuli Canteen. And this is over in the Avatar area of the park. So as you go into the park, if you hang a left and if you're at Rope Drop, you're going to follow the crowd because that's where everybody's going to go is they're going to head over to Flight of Passage as the Rope Drop Strategy. And if you listen to our Rope Drop Strategy, uh, we talk about a couple different strategies you can deploy over at Animal Kingdom. And this is one of them. But in the back corner of the Pandora Land is Satuli Canteen. And this is a quick service restaurant. It is a larger restaurant with both inside and outside seating. So lots of places to go, but they have some great food over there. You can do mobile ordering, which is one of our tips and tricks that we absolutely love. And we do think that mobile ordering definitely separates the Disney parks from a lot of the other parks, but they also have great food at Satuli Canteen. And today we're going to actually talk about that because those do make our top five food list that we're going to go through next after the top five restaurants. So trust me when I say the Satuli Canteen over in Pandora is a great place to go if you need lunch or dinner or you want a light snack. They have a lot of different choices over there and they've got a couple great items over there as well. So the Satuli Canteen is definitely something we recommend. Number four on our list is the Yak and Yeti. And this is in the back of the park over towards Asia. And the Yak and the Yeti has your traditional Chinese food over there that is phenomenal. And in fact, that makes our top five list as well. And we're gonna talk about the food items there but they have both a sit down portion and they have a quick service portion. So you can do reservations at the Yak and Yeti and go sit down and have a full meal, or you can do a quick service and walk up to the counter and buy the food right outside. So we say whatever works best for you, go ahead and pick either one. I will tell you my preference is to do the quick service and walk up to the counter and buy it. Obviously it's very quick. The food's just as good, but that's because we have three other restaurants that are on the list here still. And our number one and number two are sit-down restaurants that you may want to get a reservation for. So if you're going to try the Yak and Yeti, we recommend do the counter service, do the quick service. That's less expensive. It's a lot quicker. And you're going to be able to pick one or two items, share those with your family. And we'll talk about the best food items there in the next few minutes here. Number three on our list is our personal favorite place to go for quick service. Okay, and th aside from the sit-down, because our number one and two are sit-down restaurants, but our favorite quick service is Flame Tree Barbecue, which is on the main center island. And it's over towards the right as if you're going to go over to Dino Land there at Animal Kingdom. Now, Flame Tree Barbecue, there's multiple reasons why this is our favorite place. Number one, it has so much seating, it's ridiculous. And the cool thing is you don't see it when you walk up to Flame Tree Barbecue. The seating is actually behind the restaurant. And as you go back there, there is a path that winds around to probably six or seven different areas of seating. And each area has multiple tables with tons of chairs. So whether you're in a small group or a big group, you're going to find a place to sit over at Flame Tree Barbecue. Not to mention that the food there is some of the best food in the entire park. Now, again, this one also has food items on the top five list. So today's a little bit different than some of our other days. A lot of our other days, we will uh, give you the top five restaurants and they're usually the top five due to atmosphere or something really cool about them. This one at Animal Kingdom, these restaurants today are all, they all have food on the top five item list. You definitely want to go try them out. All the food is great at these places, but Flame Tree Barbecue being quick service and a walk-up counter is going to be less expensive than our top two items. And they have really good food at Flame Tree with the mac and cheese that we're going to talk about here in a minute. They've also got the ribs, they've got the chicken, they've got a whole bunch of different things. And if you know me, I love barbecue and they have a lot of great options. Even our daughter, who's 11 years old, she always finds something there that she absolutely loves. And she likes to try different things each time. And she's loved everything she's had at Flame Tree. So we definitely recommend Flame Tree as a top five restaurant. And it's number three on our list. Going to number two on our list is going to be Tiffin's. And this is the nicest restaurant over at Animal Kingdom. And I will argue and say that throughout all of the Disney Orlando Resort, nicest restaurant. So let's just rattle off a few. So over at Magic Kingdom, you've got Be Our Guest and Cinderella's Royal Table. Those are both great. But if you listen to those episodes I talked about, they're really good, but the food's very unique. So though it has a really cool atmosphere and it's expensive, not everybody's going to love the food at those two places. At Tiffin's, it's the opposite. Everyone's going to love the food at Tiffin's. It's phenomenal. As far as the nice restaurants go, this is, in my opinion, the nicest. Now, when you go to Epcot, you do have 
CPA over in Canada. They've got really good food. I will say that they're in a dead heat for Tiffin's for the best food at a nice restaurant. And then over at Hollywood Studios, you've got the Brown Derby. And the Brown Derby's good. It's that classic Hollywood style, but Tiffin's and Le Cellier over at Epcot definitely have the best food as far as a nice restaurant goes. So if you're looking for a nice restaurant that has really great food, that's your traditional type of steakhouse with scallops and all those kind of cool things, Tiffin's is probably the one that I would pick. And the reason I would pick Tiffin's over Le Cellier over at Epcot is because at Epcot, I like to eat my way through the World Showcase and there's so many food options there. I don't want to bog myself down with a single restaurant and get full at a single restaurant. At Animal Kingdom, I'm not as opposed to that. And though they have great food throughout the park, you can eat a couple of times during the day, but you can sit down and have a full meal at Animal Kingdom and not fill up the same way that you would at Epcot. So I would say between the two, Tiffin's would be my choice. If you're looking for the nicest restaurant in all the parks, I would definitely go for Tiffin's, okay? But ironically, Tiffin's is our number two restaurant, which means that there is one better at Animal Kingdom, and that is Tusker House is our number one choice. And the reason Tusker House is, in our opinion, better than Tiffin's is the food is phenomenal at Tusker House. On top of that, it is a character dining experience. So you're going to get to see Mickey and his friends walk around. They're in their safari gear and they're going to come around to each table and they're going to come greet every single table. And it's just a ton of fun to go to Tusker House. Now, pre-COVID, this was a buffet style where you could go back and forth and get whatever you want. Now, post-COVID, they've taken the buffet out. It is now family style, which means you're going to go sit down and they're just going to keep bringing you food. And it's as much as you can eat. And anything that you like and that your family eats all the food of, you can ask for more of. And so it's a great way to really get satisfied and to have some great food at the same time. Now, that doesn't mean Tiffin's doesn't have great food. I already said that it's got great food. And I said, if you want that really nice restaurant experience, I'd go there. But Tusker House just has the better atmosphere. And honestly, it does have better food. So it's got more of a variety and it's all you can eat. And they just keep bringing it to you. So our recommendation is definitely Tusker House. Now, as between these two, as far as price goes, they're about the same. With Tusker House, since it's family style, everyone's going to pay a set price, which is close to $60 or $70 per person. It is also character dining, so be aware of that. At Tiffin's, you're going to be paying per food item that you purchase, but they're all in the $20 to $30 range, and they all have accompaniments, which means that you're paying for your sides in addition to your main course. So at Tiffin's, you're going to spend about the same amount of per person that you had at Tusker House. and Tusker House, you get to try everything. So that's why I recommend it. At Tiffin's, you're only going to get to try the few things that you order. So definitely Tusker House is our number one recommendation. The good news is when you compare reservations at Animal Kingdom to some of the other parks, they're a little easier to get. And that's because Animal Kingdom is probably the lowest attendance park out of the four parks in Orlando, which means people are focused on Magic Kingdom. They're focused on Epcot and Hollywood Studios, obviously, more than they are Animal Kingdom. So when you go out and you're looking for reservations, they are a little easier to get. Now, I will tell you, I have gone to get reservations at Tusker House and I've missed and have not been able to get the reservations. And with our tip of the day, I guarantee you, you will 100% get reservations at Tusker House if you missed it on your 60-day window. So stay tuned. We're going to get to that at the end of the episode. The last thing I'm going to say about Tusker House is... I've mentioned on these other four restaurants that they all have food that made the top five list. Tusker House, it's not fair. If I said any of the foods at Tusker House would make the top five because it's family style, you get to have them all. It would dominate and take over the entire top five over at Tusker House because they are all that good. So I didn't include any of them on the top five list. So know that, know that Tusker House is our best restaurant. It has the best food in the park, hands down. And we didn't put anything on the top five because it would totally dominate and take over. The other five items are all things that you can get at all the other restaurants around the park. So take our advice. You want to go to Tusker House. We've taken family and friends there and they all absolutely love it. Next, let's go to our top five food items. So these are your meals or your quick service things that you can get, maybe share with your family. These are not your snacks and treats. We will do those here in a few minutes, but these are the top five things that you may order at the park. So number five, over at the Eight Spoon Cafe, and again, this is in the back of the park in the Asia area, is the pulled pork jelly donut sandwich. Yes, you heard that right. A jelly donut sandwich with pulled pork. It sounds strange, 
but it's got a combination of great sweet and savory at the same time. It is really good. In fact, if you go out and Google top foods over at Animal Kingdom and look at other people's food blogs, this one consistently is up in the top two or three on most food blogs. We put it at number five because it can be a little bit overwhelming. It is really good. It is an explosion of flavors. It is very messy because of the jelly and the donut and the donut itself is sticky and gets all over the place. But Eight Spoon Cafe has put together a phenomenal dish with the pulled pork jelly donut sandwich. So if you like those kind of things, if you like pulled pork, which I absolutely love it, if you like jelly donuts, you want to go to Eight Spoon Cafe back in Asia and go get the pulled pork jelly donut sandwich. Now, I will say the tough thing is it is tough to share. And that's because it does have jelly in the middle. And you guys know with jelly donuts, once you take a bite, it starts oozing all over the place and it's going to be tough. You can hand it off or maybe you're holding on to it and someone else takes a bite. You can do that. But if you're going to cut it, if you start cutting it, the jelly's going to fall out everywhere and it's just going to get all over the place. So we would recommend if you're going to share it, pick it up, eat it, let someone else take a bite, do it that way. It's very difficult to share. And we like talking a lot about sharing. So that way you get a chance to try more foods within the park. This is probably the most difficult one out of all the parks to share. So do know that going into it, but it is phenomenal. We do encourage you go try the pulled pork jelly donut sandwich at Eight Spoon Cafe in the back of the park. Number four on our list is the bowls. And I'm going to say bowls, plural. There are multiple bowls over at Satuli Canteen. So like I mentioned, over in Pandora, you have Satuli's Canteen in the back corner over there. They've got phenomenal foods over there. In fact, this is the one that's on the top five list for foods. We also have a top five snack that comes from there. And the snack can also be viewed as a full meal if you wanted to. But they have multiple bowls back there. And these bowls are not only are they good and flavorful because they've got the different types of meats in the bowls and you can pick and choose, but it is a good departure from your normal park food. Meaning if you've been eating the hamburgers, the hot dogs, the pizza, those kind of things throughout the week, or that's what your kids have been eating, to go over and get the bowls with the rice and the meat and some of the new flavors and some of the sweetness that's in there is a pleasant departure from what you've been eating the rest of the week. And the reason I say that is most people that do all four parks do Animal Kingdom last because it's the newest park and they like to go in order. And most people start with Magic Kingdom anyways. So Animal Kingdom is usually the last park that they get to. So if that's your case, then you're probably getting food tired towards the end of the week where you've been doing all the sweets, you've been doing all the great things. That's why we like the bowls over at Tuli Canteen. They're really good. They're flavorful. And it's a change of pace from what you've been having all week. So we definitely recommend them. Go try those out. And again, there's a lot of choice and a lot of variety over there. So you're going to definitely find something you like. Number three, and I've talked about this at a couple other parks, and there is an abundance of it at Animal Kingdom. They've got it at multiple restaurants, is pulled pork mac and cheese. And the one that we like to get is over at the Flame Tree Barbecue. So again, on the main center island, as you're moving right towards the Dino Island, is Flame Tree Barbecue. And you can get the pulled pork mac and cheese. This is what my wife gets every single time that we go. It is so good. The mac and cheese, it's baked and it's creamy on the inside, but hard on the top. And then they cover it in the pulled pork and it is just to die for it. It is so good. Now they also have pulled pork mac and cheese back at Eight Spoon Cafe with the jelly donut. And so you have multiple places you can get the pulled pork mac and cheese, but they also have other mac and cheeses over at Animal Kingdom. So we'll talk about another one that does make our top five list here in a couple minutes. But the pulled pork mac and cheese at Flame Tree Barbecue is a staple and a go-to for us every single time we go there. I am the one who rotates meals. So when we go to Flame Tree Barbecue, like I said, my wife will get the pulled pork mac and cheese. And then what I like to do is I will get the ribs one time or and I'll get the chicken the next time or I'll get a different food item the next time. So that way we're always trying something new and seeing how the flavors change over time because Disney does refine their recipes very often. So we're always trying different foods there, but that pulled pork mac and cheese is really good. And we definitely encourage you to go get that at Flame Tree, especially if you're looking for something quick. Number two on our list is back at Yak and Yeti. And again, you can go inside the restaurant or you can get this at the quick service. We recommend the quick service because if you're going to do a dine-in over at Animal Kingdom, go do Tusker House. But over at Yak and Yeti, our favorite food item there is the chicken fried rice. So if you like fried rice, then you definitely need to stop at Yak and Yeti and get the chicken fried rice. It's going to come in your traditional Chinese food cardboard container. It is really good. It's quite a bit of food, even though the container looks a little bit small, like you 
would normally get from Chinese food. If you dump that out onto a plate, it's going to completely fill a plate. So you can definitely share this with multiple people and even get multiple spoons and let people spoon it out of the container. But the chicken fried rice at the Yak and Yeti is very flavorful. It's very good. And it's one of their number one selling food items there. So we definitely recommend the chicken fried rice up at Yak and Yeti. Again, similar to the rice bowls over at Satuli Canteen up in Pandora, this is another kind of change of pace. You don't see many Asian type foods in the Disney parks with the exception of Epcot. So if you've been going through the parks and you've been eating your way through the parks like we do, you may want to change a pace or change a flavor when you get to Animal Kingdom. That's why we recommend the chicken fried rice up at Yak and Yeti like we do the bowls over at Satuli's Canteen. Our final item is at Tiffin's, which again, Tiffin's is the nice restaurant over there at Animal Kingdom. It is on the center island. They have lobster mac and cheese. Now, what's crazy about this is it is not a main course. It is not a main meal. It is an accompaniment, but it is the best food item on their menu. So we recommend if you're going to go to Tiffin's and you're going to get the nice dining experience, maybe you're going to order a really nice steak or a nice piece of meat. You want to accompany it with the lobster mac and cheese. Now you can also, I've heard, get it through the lounge that's at Tiffin. So they have a a lounge right out front that is more quick service where they have a bar and you can walk up and do all that. We've checked their menu multiple times. We don't see it on their menu, but we know that they have seasonal menus at the bar that are on paper. So it may be on there. And since it's hooked into the same restaurant, it doesn't surprise me at all that they can go get you the lobster mac and cheese at Tiffin's restaurant and bring it over to their bar site. But you can go in there and get that. The lobster mac and cheese is phenomenal. It is 20 some dollars for just the lobster mac and cheese as an accompaniment but it is worth it. It is very good. It's got great pieces of lobster in there. So if you like seafood and shellfish and lobster mac and cheese, definitely go try that at Tiffin's and you can probably even get it through the lounge. Like we said, we've heard that. We've never attempted to do it, but we've heard that you can get it there as well. So those are our top five foods in the park. Let's jump down now to our top five snacks in the park. And let me tell you that again, if you know us, we love to snack our way through the park. We absolutely love it. Our snacks are always going to be the go-to food items for us. We actually think the snacks in most of the parks are better than the meals. So this place doesn't disappoint either at Animal Kingdom. They've got some great ones. And especially when we're getting to the top of the list here, trust us when we say these are some of the best food items we've ever had. And they're the ones we talk about when we're home in Denver. So keep that in mind. But number five on our list is back at Satuli Canteen. Like I said, we had one on the list that's a snack at Bridges the snack and the meals, and that is the bao buns. And so these are the typical bao dumpling type buns that you would see in different Asian restaurants. But these ones are cheeseburger buns, which is really cool. The outer shell of the bao bun is white and it rises like a traditional bread, which means that when you bite into it, it's like biting into a normal bun, like biting into a hamburger bun or something like that. They just have the presence and the look of those traditional Asian dumplings. But they're filled over at Stilly's Canteen with cheeseburgers. So they've got ground beef in there with some cheese and some sauces in there. I think they've got little minced pickles in there. And the bao buns are really good. Our daughter got on a recent kick for cheeseburgers. We in Colorado finally got in and out Burger here. And so we took her there and she absolutely loves it. So when we went out there, she wanted to order these because she loves cheeseburgers. And we got a chance to all sample them. And they're actually really good. And my wife and I said, we were surprised at how good the bao buns were because normally we're getting the rice bowls. So we said, definitely in the future, when we come back, we will try the bao buns. There are a couple of them on the plate. They're actually pretty small. So they could go either way as a snack or as a meal. If they're a meal, they're probably a meal for a smaller person or a younger child because they're not very big and there's not very many of them there, which is why we have them on the snack list. They are fantastic. So we definitely recommend Go get the bao buns over at Satuli's Canteen out there in Pandora. But number four on our list is over in the dinosaur area. And over at Dino Bites, they have an ice cream cookie sandwich. And this thing is massive. This thing is really cool. Obviously, your traditional ice cream sandwich between two large cookies. It is very messy, but they give you a lot of options over there. And it is very good. So just know that you're going to need to find a restroom to wash your hands and wash your face when you're all done. But the ice cream cookie sandwich over at Dino Bites is phenomenal. Number three on our list is back up at the Yak and Yeti. 
and that is the pork egg roll. So we talked earlier about the chicken fried rice. That's more of a meal just because it's so much food where the pork egg rolls are much smaller and you only get a couple of them, but those are also phenomenal. One thing that's really surprising over at Animal Kingdom is they serve a lot of pork between the pulled pork jelly donut sandwich, the pulled pork mac and cheese, which is at multiple places. Now we've got pork egg rolls. They've got pork in the rice bowls. If you go get those, there's a lot of pork over there, but the pork egg rolls are phenomenal over at Yak and Yeti. So we recommend if you're going to go there, get the chicken fried rice, share that with everyone, get the pork egg rolls, share that with everyone. And that's a good quick snack while you're making your way through that side of the park over there. Our number two item is one of our favorite items in the park. And we've actually introduced this to a lot of friends and they absolutely love them. And that is the Buffalo chicken chips over at Trilobites. And Trilobites is in a weird area. So it's over towards the dinosaur land, but it's up on the bridge as you go from the main island towards the dinosaur land. So know that that's where Trilobites is at. And they have buffalo chicken chips there as well as an ice cream treat there and a couple other small items. It's a very small cart stand area, but the chips are phenomenal. So these are your typical kettle potato chips. So they're very, very crunchy, very crispy, which also makes them very solid, which means that they can hold the chicken. They can hold the sauces that are on there. They don't get soggy like a Lay's potato chip may. These are kettle cooked. These are phenomenal. And we absolutely love them. And our daughter does not like anything spicy. So she doesn't like anything buffalo. But we will eat the chips with the chicken and the sauce off the top. And then she will have at the chips that are on the bottom. She loves it as well. But the buffalo chicken chips are definitely something to stop and get over at Trilobites. We highly recommend them. They're great for sharing, like I said, because they are chips. They're a very light snack and they're not very expensive. So if you're in the mood for something like buffalo chicken, go try the buffalo chicken chips over at Trilobites as you're coming through that side of the park. Our number one snack item in the park is found over in Pandora. Now, I told you earlier, the best foods in the park are over at Tusker House. Their family style meal is the best thing up there. But outside of Tusker House, this item is the best item in the entire park. And that is the Pongu Lumpia. And this is over again in Pandora Land. It's right at the exit of the Flight of Passage ride, right next to Satuli's Canteen. And it's a little stand that's out there. So right outside of the store that you come out of is a little tiny stand. And they actually have two items there that are awesome. The first is the Pongu Lumpia that I told you about, which is a pineapple cream cheese egg roll. So it's very dessert. -like. It's like a cheesecake. It's a larger egg roll there. It comes with sugar sprinkled all over it. It's not too messy and the sugar isn't melted. So it's not going to make your hands sticky, but it is very tasty. And we like to get one for each person in our party. And they're very inexpensive. They're only a couple bucks each. So you're going to go get a couple different egg rolls and share those within your group. They're really good. But one of my favorite drinks at almost all the Disney parks is the Night Blossom, which is also over at the Pongu station there. And this is a like a pear passion fruit type slushy with boba in it. And it is very tart, but at the same time, it's got some sweet to it. And it is one of my favorite drinks just because it is so flavorful. And with the bulba that's in there, it's an explosion of flavor every time you get one of those that come up the straw. And it pairs really well with the Pongu Lumpia, the cream cheese egg roll. So we highly recommend that over at Pongu Pongu in the Avatar Land. So go check those out. It's a very light snack. It's something you can get and just keep going. Because we typically rope drop Flight of Passage if we get in early, when we come off the ride, we will grab these and carry them with us as we go walk towards the safari up in Africa so that we stay ahead of the crowd, but we're able to eat and get a snack and a treat along the way. So Pongu Limpia is one of the best treats in the entire park. So definitely want to go check that. So those are our top five restaurants, top five meals, and top five snacks, which now leads me into the I can do this all day tip of the day. And if you've listened to our other series here in Orlando, we've talked to you about our friends over at Mouse Dining, and today is no different. Because mouse dining plays such a huge role in Orlando and will help you get the reservations you want. Like I mentioned earlier, if you want to go to Tusker House, these reservations will fill up. I did miss it at the 60-day mark, but I can guarantee you that if you use mouse dining, you will be able to secure a reservation at the Tusker House. So the way mouse dining works is you're going to go on our site and wherever you're listening to us, you can go down into the links and we've got a link there for mouse dining. 
you can set up a free account or a paid account, depending on how many alerts you want. And what you're going to do is you're going to tell them what day you're in the park and what restaurant you're trying to get and what window of opportunity you want. And then they're going to start sending you text messages whenever a reservation opens up there. Now, I will warn you, you do need to be very quick to get that reservation secured because by the time it pops into your text and you click it, other people are also doing the same thing. So it's first come, first serve. Whoever gets it is going to win. Now, the times that I've tried to get Tusker House, I have used mouse dining and I have never failed to get Tusker House through mouse dining. In fact, not only have I never failed, I've always got it on my first attempt, meaning that when it popped up and the text hit me, I was able to go in within a few seconds, secure that reservation, and I wasn't fighting other people for it traditionally. So if you want to go to Tusker House, our number one recommendation, I want to tell you go to mouse dining down in our links and set up an account with them, and you can get that text message sent to you when one opens up there. Now, in addition to that, you can also do it at all the other parks. So when you use mouse dining at a place like Space 220 at Epcot or Be Our Guest, those are going to go very quick within about 10 or 15 seconds of them hitting the text. So we encourage you, have your phone out and ready. But the trick is most people will cancel their reservation at 24 hours prior to their reservation because that's when Disney's going to charge them if they cancel. So the day before you go, don't sweat it yet. What's going to happen is the day before you go, you're going to start getting texts all day long saying, hey, another reservation opened there. Another one did. Another one did. That's how we got Space 220 at Epcot. So have faith. Know that mouse signing is going to take care of you. The day before, you're going to get a lot of texts. You just need to be quick. Go in there, click right away, and make sure you're logged in, and then you can secure those reservations. So again, Go check out Mouse Dining. They will help you secure reservations if you missed your 60-day window or if they're already gone. With that, we hope you have a very magical vacation and you join us next week as we talk about Disney Springs, which has a ton of food options and a ton of restaurants. And our tip of the day is going to be totally different and it's going to be one where we tell you don't go somewhere. So definitely tune in with us next week as we talk about Disney Springs. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.